Namaste. And uh, welcome all of you to this Wednesday 10 p.m. edition. And today we are going to talk about uh, what India and America are doing with the American expert. And uh, of course, before that, we are going to talk about the New York shooting. That's now top of the agenda. So welcome, Shri Vibhuti Jha. Welcome to the Wednesday Jaipur Dialogues. So what's happening in the New York shooting? I believe everybody's gone quiet, all quiet on the Western Front. I, I read, uh, you know, thank you viewers for listening to us. I noticed something very interesting. Sanjay Ji is in vertical, I'm in horizontal. He is in horizontal, I'm horizontal <laughs> stripe. Our stripes are different, but... You know, we are the opening batsmen for the team today. Mm -hmm. So here is the thing. What has happened is very interesting that uh, the shooting that happened in the train yesterday, you know, people for a while, you know, the way the media plays a role. And we are, I think I'm proudly part of the process where we are the exceptions to the rule of media. We tell the truth the way we see it and the way we feel it. So, you know, yesterday, many media people were not even talking about the fact that the guy who did it, was black, except they say that he was five feet, five inch, stout, 170 pounds, well built, and he was seemingly black color. Now, today we know the name, and a very interesting thing happened. Nobody is talking about it. Because What's, the name? What's the name? What's James the name? James or something. Yeah, yeah, James something. Yes, his name is James. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he has quoted in his tweet and his social media posts very sympathetic to Brotherhood of Islam. So is he is he a convert? We do not know. He's still manhunt is still on. He's definitely hiding somewhere. Some people talked about he was the lone wolf. I don't believe he was a lone wolf. Nobody is a lone wolf. Nobody everybody is, a lone wolf. is everybody is in this in the service of the theology. Correct. Yes. This is not a lone wolf. It is a highly coordinated approach. Luckily, it is we Helikin that people have not been talking about as much is that uh, one of his guns locked in as a result of which he had to run and all the detonators had to be left behind. There were other fuel and other things in his package. So it was definitely a very big project. It failed probably because this entire the gun locked in. Otherwise, the first gun he fired 30 magazines, but the second one locked, and that's why he had to flee. That's the point which is very important. And of course, right now there are investigations going on, but you know how the investigations go on in the process, what will be shut down, what will be coming out. But one thing that we have noticed is technology ki growth ki wajah se, you know, hmm. you can't well, hide. The lieutenant governor of New York was arrested for campaign funds of misuse. He has resigned and he is behind bars. Was That's he a Democrat? The, uh, Democrat, yes. Oh, of course. Democrats, yeah. they're, they're very democratic. <laughs> Democrats, they're very democratic with money as well. <laughs> so, so you are looking at a scenario where technology, I have said this here before and I'll say it again, you can't hide anymore. We are all tracked. We always leave a tail behind. Yeah, so yes, so yes. even Joe Biden is not able to hide anymore. And uh, coming to Joe Biden, uh, we just saw this two plus two dialogue that was yeah. going on. And uh, how do you uh, how do you read the Indian team's response? So uh, all, the, Jha, all the heavy happy. heavy artillery that. Uh, the Americans were trying to bring on, but uh, I believe they couldn't. No, one thing is definitely true is that, you know, the, there have been many two plus twos have happened. Indian, India, US relationship has gone through and, you know, wonderful exfoliated terms. Uh, but eventually it has to be assessed on actual happenings. So you have, you have two clear things that are very important. One of them is how Mr. Jashankar asserted and said, used words 
which hit hard satyam uvach priyam uvach he he did it when he told the western correspondent rather eloquently and very beautifully that you are worried about our energy usage what we consume in one day one month you consume in half a day now that hits home that's what is called telling the truth nicely politely and absolutely a big slap on the face don't lecture us the second part which i notice in this in this tenure of mr jayshankar is that he is clearly put america on the back foot by telling them don't sermonize us we are wise enough to know our needs our requirements and without saying the words just as you do things for american people we have to do things for our indian people he conveyed that message my security needs can't be dictated by your political compulsions on a land thousands of miles away from me you know where you are playing your own political games so he made some very poignant statements i compliment him for that uh, for you know conveying that message square and clear so much so that the mr blinken had to make the statement that we understand your compulsions and your relationships of the past but he also issued a veiled threat but we are in a new world today democracies must support democracy and i love that coming from democracies Clinton. must support democracies yes i love that i <laughs> the american you know, democracy is limited only to the four corners of the united states correct. beyond this that was, it's the worst autocracy that you can think of that is what and i was very happy about what is their past they have never supported democracy no, exactly, they have always supported exactly. autocracies that will be a permanent quote that indians must prepare to use it to mr blinken democracies must support democracies not not the fake allies of uh, democracy you know that's what is important that's why i said if you remember when mr biden said we are going to be guided by science i am very happy you are going to become sanatani now if you are going to be guided by science <laughs> uh, stop taking oath on the bible exactly <laughs> turn so to bhagavad to, gita we have to embrace certain words ekdam zor se gale laga kar so when mr blinken said what he said i was happy if you want to say democracies must support democracies all right we are the largest strongest the most prominent democracies of the world think for a moment why are we giving in to fulfilling the democratic aspirations of terrorists and anti social elements is a thought my thought why why are india why is india and america suffering the violence and all untoward incidents majority of them is it because we are trying to going overboard in fulfilling the democratic aspirations of people who want to destroy us that is exactly. not democracy exactly exactly, exactly. they are using democracy to subvert democracy exactly that's what but i doing. i must tell you this today sanjay ji just for a sake of interruption that i read this dr jashankar addressed the harvard university h uh, h o w a r d is in washington area only and i'm quoting his statement in which he said that the indian diaspora has dignified defined india's image in us society for our our ties to grow it is equally necessary that there is a better understanding of india and the world on the part of young americans he focused on young americans he did not say young indians or young americans alone he said young americans which includes everybody your appreciation of a civilizational state again a very important statement civilizational state yes, and a I fellow I've, democratic I've, I've, polity i've heard it used for the first time yes he has said of a civilized that's why i wanted to read that quote i knew you would appreciate that part of a civilizational state and a fellow democratic polity that's another very significant thing another fellow democratic polity hum to purane hain aap abhi aaye hain polity that in daily overcoming enormous odds in is essential to overcoming the essential odds that's what i was talking about why is it covid hit india and us the highest maximum number of damage was done to india and the us why is it that india and the us are constantly battling 
one social kind of fissure or the other. These are things when Je- when Blinken says that we need to be supporting democracies, must the most uh, democracies, it's time I think they have either thought about it or they are worried about it. You know what is happening yes, in yes, Pakistan. Yes, so yes, Pakistan yes, is, yes. A, is, a, is a pariah case for everybody now. Nobody talks about it. earlier in, in another era, in Congress era, Blinken would have gone for equal number of minutes and hours to Pakistan as well after India visit. So it's no longer happening that way. So you can see how India has progressed further in that part. So this was very, this was a very interesting uh, uh, part to the whole visit of these two gentlemen. No, of course, I think uh, Blinken uh, did do his customary task of uh, preaching India on the human rights issue. Yeah. But uh, I was happy that uh, the Indian delegation completely ignored it. That's right. Yes. You know, it, it is it is nice to see that India has begun to now not only be polite, but politely firm and acts on that intent. You have to fulfill your quota for speeches for the American press. We don't give a damn. Quite right. And where is our uh, gentleman uh, Joe Biden going? I think uh, uh, between Modi and Biden in that uh, opening remarks that we had, that the opening statements, I thought uh, Biden looked quite sheepish. Biden may be sheepish or was he sleepy? I do not know that. You know, it's a... <laughs> A sleepy Joe. <laughs> See, this, this, I don't know whether you saw this or not. That when a country as strong ally of America as Saudi Arabia did a skit in its comedy show, you know, have you seen that? Please see that. It's on YouTube. More What's than that? four million downloads have happened on that, in which they have made a caricature or a commentary. On Biden and Kamala Di, okay, and how Biden is being treated. It's as an American, I'm unhappy. As a democracy lover, I'm very happy. As an American, I'm, I'm you know, my, my sentiment is if Saudi Arabia has started a comedy show in which they mocked Biden and American Vice President Kamala Harris, it opens the floor. Now, you <laughs> and I can also make a comedy show on MBS. Let's see what they have to say. There are times when the floor opens up. This is a very welcome sign. But they made a mockery of Biden in terms of his sleepiness. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it is worth watching if you can do do watch. It is not just uh, his sleepiness. I think uh, almost everybody seems to disregard him. I saw that uh, yeah. little clip that came out, mm-hmm. and there was this uh, feast in the White House where the fellow was roaming all alone, and nobody was listening to him. He was trying to put his uh, hand on Obama's back and attract his attention and he just ignored yeah, yeah. him. He was totally ignored. Yeah, you, you can see the power play. Uh, his approval ratings are abysmally low as a result of which, you know, I, you know, people are also talking about that he may be removed and whether he wants to go, you know, uh, deliberately, we do not know. But the point is that it is important. Uh, that he is getting sidelined. He is not knowing what he's talking about. I mean, look at it this way. One of the things which is hurting America a lot, and this I see a parallel between Congress party in India and uh, Democratic Party here. They immediately begin to call names. Now you are dealing with an adversary. And if you begin to call him genocidal, he has committed genocide, he's a war criminal. How are you ever going to have a conversation with him? On what ground? There is no meeting ground. That's what happened to Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi. When you called Modi, Maut ka saudagar, chokidar, chor hai, ab kis baat se, ab kis moon se ab chokidar se baat karenge ya? You lose ground. And I see those rhetorics. Biden's rhetorics are going to hurt America more than he imagines. The only saving grace in that is that people will let it pass because he's an old man, doesn't know what he's talking about. That's the only way it can go about. But one thing is definitely true, and I would put it this way, that I was very happy with this meeting because India stood its ground. 
India stood its ground without fear, fully aware of the consequences, and recognizing this very fact that America has lost its credibility completely. So when Mr. Blinken talks about use of chemical weapons and credible sources, everybody begins to think about the WMD story. Where was the credibility at that time? So right now, believe it or not, we Americans suffer from a credibility factor within ourselves. Intelligence agencies, 51 intelligence agency people wrote on Hunter Biden's uh, you know, laptop computer uh, you know, theft that it was a Russian disinformation. That virtually killed the entire thing. Today, the whole media, New York Post, Washington Post, everybody who opposed it, now they admit, yes, it is real. But the damage is done. Now people are asking, Republicans are asking that those 51 people must be asked to testify. On what basis they ruled that? They said that. So you are looking at a credibility factor of U.S. Because Russia, Russian point of view is that we are destroying those chemical labs that America had set up in, in, uh, in, in Ukraine. Who is to be believed? That's the issue that U.S. has to contend with. But I, I give credit to you, Indian delegation, for having been able to very firmly, very, very strongly stood their ground and didn't budge or didn't give in. That's another thing. But one thing which I'll tell you, Sanjayji, we can talk about U.S.-India relationship has gone through up and down and whatever. Whether any political party comes or not, there is a recognition in the United States of two things. One, you can't ignore India. We have had we have played enough hooky with them. Now you can't play hooky with them. Number two is that even Ameri Indian diaspora in America has become assertive now. We have begun to open up. We have begun to question and ask. So when Sundar Pichai and Google invited equal equality labs to spread to listen to their report of caste discrimination by a Dalit guy to be talking there. People also talked about the fact that, hey, why don't you look up the Carnegie Foundation report as well at the same time? I tweeted by saying, asking Kona and HAF and Hindu Pact and other organizations, I put a tweet that, you know, why are you hell-bent on trying to uh, create your own report? Prepare your own, own evidence. Present it to them as well. So unless and until that proactiveness begins to play in our role, we will suffer, but it is happening. Across the country, people are now making noise. They are not going to keep quiet, uh, whether it is Amy Wax, who, who said whatever she said on Tucker Carlson's show. People in Indians in America are now, is, uh, is, uh, are definitely fighting back. Yeah. Yes, I think Amy Wax was quite nasty. She said things that are not supposed to be said. Right. And uh, what is she? She's a Democrat? If she's on Tucker's show, then she can't be a Democrat. <laughs> then, then what, what was she uh, rambling about? She was rambling about a different. She had an issue of a different kind. She said that these people who have come here have become successful and they are cursing us. They are not being fair. And, uh, you know, there was one gentleman who said, Ki, how will India feel if Parsis began to criticize India despite being very successful in, in, in India? But Parsis have adjusted to our society very well. They have accepted and we are they are who they are. Oh. But in this particular instance, when they are, by the way, the Parsis, Indians, are, Parsis are first rate seculars too. Yes. You know, in the negative sense. Yes, I know, I know, you know. First rate <laughs> So you are talking about a scenario. That's what is the uh, issue here. Is that a lot of Indians, because they became woke, because they are woke. You know, the number of Indian parents who were so proud that their kids participated in Black Lives Matter movement, not realizing the implications of that. When you participate in something uh, in, in that way, then it begins to bother people. Oh, you have su been successful here, yet you are cursing us for the way we are. It's we who let you succeed and you are cursing us despite your success here. What kind of a loyalty is that? So, you know, it is... It is a question of one person's opinion versus another person's point of view. And, uh, you know, but, but that is a subject matter 
which needs to be paid. Yeah, they have been cursing the Indians all along. And, but uh, I have said this, Sanjay Ji, on this matter. Using, I, I, using their uh, racist uh, right. glasses. My thought process is very simple on this. Would she say the same statement replacing India with some other faith or some other, other country? The answer is no. Because she knows that Indians are the last to react. That's that. There will be no media repercussions for, for a statement if she makes mention of an Indian, because Indians are controlling at the CEO position of many corporations, and they are all woke, Parag Agarwal included. You know that's what I'm trying to say to you here. So now Elon Musk comes to the you know becomes the largest shareholder. Suddenly, the st em Twitter employees are stressed out. <laughs> You heard about that, right? <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. And they're not giving him a board position because uh, they're shit scared that he might not uh, play the ball. Uh, he, I believe he turned down the board position. He says, I don't want to be on the board. Is it? I, yeah. I don't know. You would know That's better. That's what I read. That's what I read. He said, I'm not interested in going on the board. He was invited because on the board, if he comes, he had fallen for that trap. On the board, then the board decision will overpower him, even though he may be the largest shareholder depending on what kind of a voting rights he had. So if, if if his idea is voted down by 10 to 1, it can't be done. But as an outsider, he can keep chiming in. Yes, quite right. right. And I request all the viewers to please uh, start shooting your questions. And uh, let's discuss the more weighty issues of Indo-US relations, sure. and especially in light of what is going to happen in the mid-election cycle. You think that uh, there will be uh, another readjustment uh, after the Democrats lose both the House and the Senate? And, of course, you win your seat in the New York State Assembly. Thank you for your good wishes. I think there is going to be a realignment. Uh, very big time. The issues which are very important, which I, in my in my welcome speech to the Republican uh, club of my constituency, uh, I, I said very simply that I don't want Long Island to become like San Francisco, Los Angeles, or New York City. So one of the things that we enjoy here is a remarkable peace, remarkable sense of security, that even if my wife or my children are out driving at two o'clock in the morning, I know they are safe. I can't say the same thing about LA, San Francisco or New York City today. You know, a university professor was telling me day before yesterday that he or she was going to go to Manhattan from Brooklyn, exactly. Brooklyn exactly taking the subway after two years of uh, hiatus because of the COVID scenario. And I told her, be careful, subways are not safe yet. And lo and behold, yesterday the same thing happened. And her message to me was the same thing. Oh, my God, uh, whether you knew or what it was. I said, no, I did not know. But it was just a <laughs> fact of warning you. Because it is no longer safe. The confidence, the trust is gone from the American society. So I th that's what I'm saying. What is happening? Three things are holding up for Republicans in this. One is the fact that law and order is a big problem. People are looking for security. Defunding is, is a major, major uh, non-issue. Then there is an issue of a cashless bail system, the way Blasio and Democrats have introduced, that you can rob up to $900, it's okay, you will be let go. An attorney showed us a dossier. I mean, it's $900 per day? That's not undefined. But I was coming to the say, this, the lawyer showed us, attorney, a 32-file complaint, 32 files on the same person. He is let go, comes back, goes again and does it. That's the scenario of lawlessness. This is what Eric Adams, the New York City mayor, who is a former policeman and a Republican, who became a Democrat to win the election, which is good for him. He's a tough guy. He knows he's a cop. He has been talking about bringing about restoring faith in police, restoring uh, you know, the parity of the funding and everything else. And Democratic Party is opposing him that you can't bring about these changes. He wanted to bring out, bring back 
the special police group that used to monitor terror and violence and guns, they are not letting him do that. I'm saying I love AOC from that point of view. The more she takes the party to the left, the greater the chance for Republicans to win, of which I am also a candidate. So that's another one. Price hike is big. Price hike is big. I mean, I told you, you are now filling a gas tank of your car. It is $84, $86, depending on whether you put 20 gallons or 18 gallons or nine, or 19 gallons. When you have, we are putting $80 of gas, which was six months ago, 40, half. It is 48% increase in gas prices. So, and which is the what which keeps America moving. So that is going to hurt people who used to drive out 100 miles for a shopping or just for a picnic. They're not going to do that anymore. Egg prices have gone up. Milk prices have gone up. This is not the United States I came to. And I believe that inflation happens every year to the year. Two, three, four percent inflation was great. It's good for the economy, as we were taught in the subject matter of economics. A certain amount of inflation is good. But this is 41 year high inflation. So when people in India talk about inflation, they don't know what we are going through here. <laughs> the internal documents of the government show that Biden was prepared was working towards that if his agenda is to be met with, gas prices will have to be over $100. And that's what they have succeeded in doing, sir. So people are now getting to know things. Price and, you know, and, and the lawlessness part of it is big. So that works out for in Republican favor. And the odds are that Senate, Congress, and several state legislatures, there will be a swing to the Republican side. People are annoyed. Very unhappy. So um, how does that work out for the Indian state? Uh, it will work for you're talking about Indian state, India as a country, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, it will work out well because uh, Republican Party, despite its oddity with uh, religious uh, dogmas that they are bedeviled with uh, you know, extreme conservative or evangelicals and everything else. But there is a recognition in Republican Party more. But they are religious driven. Let's put it this way very clear. They are very religious driven. And, you know, we will have to handle that part. But there is only that angle of religion. But when it comes to business, when it comes to political realities, when it comes to handling relationships, they score over the Democrats. And that will be good for India. If Senate and uh, Congress is is uh, is in back to Republican hands, I think that will be good for India in terms of legislative support and whatever. Yeah. There's also this uh, growing realization that uh, I think within America that uh, India is doing significantly better. They are exporting more to the America. They are exporting not just the, the services that they were pretty strong with. They are also exporting a lot of goods and uh, india of course uh, even during these depressed time they have set up an all-time record they exported 400 billion dollars worth of goods and uh, about 260 billion dollars worth of services and uh, that's about uh, the same as uh, uh, their currency reserves so uh, the overall, this scenario was looking quite good from the Indian point of view. But uh, somehow, that big brother attitude that we see more in the American media, now a little less in the American politicians, that doesn't seem to be going away. They're still not uh, ready to grant uh, India a seat at the high table. The important part is uh, that the high seat ki jahan tak baat hai, you know, the issue of the high seat, it will happen eventually. As you rightly say, there is a bipartisan support as far as I know. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the U.S. Congress and establishment, there is, a, there is a definite growing acceptance that you can't ignore India anymore. That is given. Regardless of the occasional individual 
histrionics that they go on, it is established now. The issues which are very important are the two times, if you look at the 1990 and 2000. 1990, you had, we had economic liberalization, right? Economic liberalization that opened up the economy. Passage was slow. But 2000 onwards, there was a major, major movement happening. And the collaboration, what was happening was not only in, you know, in one field, but defense, security, you know, as you rightly said, trade, and ignoring the, and putting aside the differences, differences aside. So you are looking at a significant amount of relationship coming together. The third element, which is very important, is the recognition by America that Indian students contribute a lot here. And that's why they are again talking about increasing the number of Indian students coming to the United States. So you are looking at a scenario that business communities and academia, these collaborations are going to grow more and more. And I think in that sense, if you look at Blinken's statement that democracies must support democracies, gathers more significance from that point of view. That they are looking at larger trades. The other part, which is also important, is the Biden's point of view. He's, I mean, let's, let me give you the establishment scenario now. Biden has been known as historically pro-India, though he has made flippant statements at times, but he, he's supposed to have played a big role in the nuclear deal. He has defined India-US relationship as the defining moment of 21st century. He also is thinking about from the other areas of concerns, and that is climate, cybersecurity, pandemics. No coincidence that we, the two countries where they hit the hardest on these matters. So I'm looking at it from this point of view that you are looking at if, you know, with Jay Shankar Ji saying what he's saying, you are looking at a significant shift in the policies. And uh, it will be, have to be pro-India because the traditional NATO allies are gone with the wind, to put it mildly. Now that you mentioned the NATO allies, how is the American public uh, viewing the conflict in the Ukraine and the U.S. involvement over there? Uh, there are two kinds of things here. One is that nobody uh, with an open mind can support. Because we, I have a lot of Ukrainian friends. I have a lot of Russian friends. Nobody is liking this particular war. But one thing is definitely true, that America's support has not been to the hilt for, for Ukraine. That has obvious. So by a huge percentage, American people are saying that Biden has not done enough. They have not done enough. People are, I mean, to the extent that at one point in time, 62% people were said that we will support a higher gas price if it is required to fund Iraq, uh, Ukraine war. At the same time, people are also concerned that Ukraine doesn't become another Taliban, Taliban state. Because if you are trying to replicate the, duplicate the model of Afghanistan, that we will draw Russia in and he will have to fight the insurgency we will create another form of Tali Ukrainian Taliban who will give them weapons and stinger missiles and Russia will lose and go again. Russia didn't fall for that trap this time. So that's why you, 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 it, it, is, it is a sad thing. Uh, it's a very sad thing. People recognize it. And, uh, you know, people are not happy about it at all because this country is made up of many people coming from those regions and Europe and everywhere else. So it is a sad situation. Not, 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 not happy. People are not happy with the American actions in Ukraine. Yes, I mean, uh, neither did they support Ukraine wholeheartedly, uh, nor did they uh, allow them to disengage. Right. They have kept it uh, at some kind of a simmer, I would say, and yes. the Ukrainians are suffering. Mm -hmm. And because they are Europeans, they are closer to the American heart, obviously. They have the brown eyes and the blue eyes, and uh, uh, it was also said, I think, uh, in That's some right. of the uh, television uh, talks, right. that they are not like the Middle East brownies. They are Europeans. They are white like us with blue and brown eyes. That's right. You remember that? We all remember that. Yes. 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 Racist bastards. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> so, um, where does that uh, leave Biden? What's his rating right now? Oh, Biden is in low 40s. 
There are some ratings that have shown him at 31%. It's an, it's an irrecoverable loss. There's nothing he's going to do that will win him anything. Because now what has happened is that his failures on many counts are showing up. Immigration is one. The New York Times fortunately did a report, you know, which said that the Biden had asked his admin, has his team, who is responsible for this screw up at the border? I want to fire him. Now, New York Times, when they say they have some amazing inside track uh, on, uh, you know, from from the from the system within, it became a news. But it was talked only once. <laughs> It was just said once, no discussion on it. <laughs> so it is, it is, it is coming out. The anti-Biden, I'm not saying anti-Biden. The frustration with Biden is now showing up. He, we we bet on the wrong horse. He was not fit, and and the VP team is also very weak. This, in my opinion, since I've seen, this is the weakest team of the president and vice presidency. One doesn't know what he's saying. Other doesn't know where she is. How's Kamala Aunty doing uh, since you mention it? Kamala Aunty, she has had a major dissertation by her own staff. More than a dozen have left her staff out of sheer frustration that she is a lousy leader. She shouts, screams, hardly motivates, and she doesn't know what she's doing. This is the reason why so many have left already in the very first year. So you are looking at... Uh, uh, a lady, unfortunately, her name is Kamala, uh, gets identified as an Indian, but she's hardly an Indian. So I totally say that. Listen, let's not feel, uh, you know, romantically tearful about Kamala Ji because she's not an Indian. She has an Indian name. Her mother was an Indian. We respect that. No doubt about that. But she has voluntarily abandoned her Indian heritage, except for when it comes to having an Idli in campaign. That's it. So I, would, I would not say, I would not attach any importance. She's just like any other vice president of country. And vice presidential candidates are generally weak candidates. They are not supposed to be the big time replacement of the president. So you, lo you look at it from that point of view. There are very few vice presidents who have had, you know, a good role in the administration. Al Gore was one of them, you know. So, but the rest of it, Mike Pence was another one. He also showed up very well as a vice president. Trump gave him the respect, but more or less it is potato, potato scenario also is there. Remember George Bush Sr., his vice presidential candidate was goodness knows how he chose that, you know. But then that's what they say that vice presidents don't win you elections. They might lose you, but they won't win you. Sarah Palin was another. Look at that example. So they were all, uh, they are not supposed to be strong and powerful. But in her case, the tragedy is... Um, she was. She lost the first round of debate herself. Yes, she yes, didn't yes, have yes. to be there. <laughs> she was ejected by her own party, and you are you are parachuting her into vice president position to give her presidency. And I have said this to you here that Biden may not last for until the second State of the Union address. So you know you are you are seeing the signs of that. Right, right. And uh, I just um, heard somebody just. Uh mention that uh, uh, Mr. Jashankar has uh, come up with some very good statement about the human rights in the USA. And right. He seems to have said that India too has concerns about human rights in the USA. Right. That's very true. This is, this is, this is the issue, if you recall, when we were talking about the elections of 2024 and Trump here, I had mentioned that human rights, minority, and uh, anything that Modi will try to do will be a dis dis disinterest of some group of people and there will be violence on that. Human rights, democracy and all. It was time for people to begin to point out that human rights issue. We have no human rights issue. That's what stand we should take. So when Arfa Khanam sir, uh, puts a tweet, this is the face of Islam or, uh, in, in India, uh, she should show her own face. Instead of putting a 90-year-old man's picture, you know, she should show her own face. We have to contest that part. And I'm glad it was contested. That's the issue which we have to begin to be very active about. That when you talk about religion, when you talk about human rights, 
point out to America, here are your partners and here is their human rights record. So talk to them before you talk to us. It's time to do the straight talk with America and Americans love the straight talk. Let me tell you that. I have worked with American companies a lot of my life. I have lived in America for a lot of time. They want to be told the truth. They listen. They may not agree with you, but they will listen to you. And that's what is our job, is to convey the message to them. That's what it is. If you do, if we just stay quiet, it doesn't matter. But it is very important. You know, for example, I, have, I, I would say that, you know, yesterday's news was that Justin Trudeau in Canada has brought about a legislation where he will authorize medias, which will be government authorized. Think about it. So there was another another media company that is anti-Trudeau. They didn't get the government authorization. They have sued Justin Trudeau for that. You know what Trudeau did for truckers' strike. He brought in emergency and all that. I asked Terry Milevsky actually, what would you have said? Because he was praising Trudeau for protecting the rights of law-abiding citizens. And I asked Terry, what would you have said if Modi had done emergency and resorted to all kinds of a state measure to control these, uh, uh, you know, uh, rummaging uh, the entire tractor strike. What would you do say if Modi were to brought about rules, regulations in controlling that, all right, these are the people who are authorized by us. Rest of you are not authorized by me. Think about it. We have to begin to ask those questions of Justin Trudeau as well, because you should see, you should have seen his body language yesterday in his speech. He was vehement and angry because somebody was trying to do against something against him. So, you know, we have to, thanks to technology, we get to know, we get to see things in real time, as a result of which we have to be very care, pointing out the bleeding obvious. If we don't, we lose. Ab jo hai, maun rehne ki, uh, maun rehne ka time khatam ho gaya hai, bolne ka time aya hai, bolna. Well, this is just a report, a one hour uh, old report from Chidanand Rajgata, hmm. uh, who reports for the Times News Network. Yeah. And I must read it out. Okay. I must read it out to you as well as to the listeners, hmm. uh, the viewers. Uh, it says, uh, uh, Washington, unfazed and unbowed in the face of American pressure, India is pushing back at Washington on several contentious issues including the threat of sanctions and its crusade for human rights while maintaining that ties between the two sides are strong enough to accommodate differences. Now, in a blunt rebuttal to the U.S. menacing New Delhi with sanctions threat over its purchase of the Russian S-400 missile defense system, External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar on Wednesday, that is today, said, Katsa, the U.S. domestic law that enjoined sanctions for such transactions with American adversaries was for Washington to sort out. This is this is something you will be very happy to know, Sanjay Ji, that about nine months ago, in a council of no, let me let me complete this. Let yeah, me yeah, complete please, this please, please, because please. there's something better to come. Yeah, and it says that it is their legislation, and whatever has to be done has to be done by them. Jayashankar said implicitly declaring that India will do what it takes to safeguard its security without worrying about sanctions. Okay, now next, <laughs> the, 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 the better one. The Indian minister similarly pushed back at the US criticism of human rights in India, attributing it to American lobbies and vote banks. People are entitled to have views about us. We also are entitled to have views about their lobbies and vote banks. We will not be reticent. We also have views on other people's human rights, particularly when it pertains to our community. Yashankar retorted in one of the strongest repudiation of the constant American lectures on human rights. What do you say to that? Oh, Indeed. it's music to the ears. I wish I had read that before. However, I think I the, the, the entire diaspora should be applauding. Yeah, this, because think. this is this is what I have said that. What India must say, stop sermonizing us, you know, like you have enough, the phrase that we use at one point in time, Apne mein, we have to look at ourselves too. And that's what I have been saying. So I'm very happy that Mr. Jashankar has, in a way, 
echoed my sentiments. But nine months ago, in a Council of Strategic Affairs, uh, uh, that's a think tank run by an Indian, and there were several people in that forum, and I had opined in that, that U.S. will never be able to impose cuts on India for its own self-interest. And the own self-interest is driven by two factors. One is the fact that India is a member of Quad. You have adopted it. You need China. And this particular legislation was brought in even, la even later than the deal already done. So you can't ret retrospectively punish a country where the agreement was signed prior to this particular cuts up becoming a law. So that is something which is dangerous precedence will be set. Because in that case, you can make a law today and sanction America tomorrow for its act of 100 years ago. So that is one reason. And second, in the Katsa itself, and I think Jaisankar has, Jaisankar Ji has really pointed it out very well, there are exemptions which United States retains to itself that sanction will be an exempted category. India falls under every single consideration of sanction exemption, whether it's a strategic partner, large trade partner, or special relationships, you name the category and India qualified. So nine months ago, I had said that India's position has to be, Katsa is your legislation. It doesn't apply to me. If you do it, it's your problem. It doesn't apply to me. It's your problem. Exactly. Absolutely. You, That's what you, I'm you so want, glad You want us to al align uh, with China. Uh, mm -hmm. If it suits us, we will do even that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And this absolutely. is another part, which is I have shared with American politicians. The more you rant that we are doing it for the American people, we are doing it for American uh, interests. Why do you think that others don't have other people's interests in mind too? Every country has its right. own people's mind too. So you overblow your own scenario. Go ahead. Okay, I think it's time to go to the audience questions. And before that, once again, reminding all the viewers, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, whoever is watching, please press the like button. And of course, do subscribe to our backup channel, the Jaipur Dialogues Vimersh, and do go to the subscription to the description part and support us and follow us. And also subscribe to Jaipur Dialogue USA. <laughs> and also subscribe to the Jaipur Dialogues USA very much. Thank you. Mithilesh Kumar, Mr. Jha, do you think that Indian community in US needs to build bridges with other minority communities to become politically relevant? Two, two words. Absolutely yes. Uh, there is no, no, no downside to maintaining uh, relationship. I, why say bridges? I say maintain relationships. You know, building bridges where it is none and maintain relationships where they exist and create relationships where there is none existing. So by in Nalanda International, an organization that I'm part of, we have a Bridge Builder Award. Uh, where we have, you, you can look up Nalanda, Nalanda University, we have given brilliant awards to recognize people from Tulsi Gabbard to Deepak, Deepak Chopra to Sam, uh, Sam Cohen and other academicians who have really built bridges. And that's absolutely right. a good idea. Thank you, Mithresh. Next, Next question. Chaitanya Nairu, do you think India is doing enough to maximizing its relationship with the U.S. economically, militarily, and diplomatically? Should India attend upcoming G7 and BRICS summits? How should India maximize its national power by using these platforms? And this looks like a, a UPSC level question. <laughs> so you have to answer it in about 1,000 words. 1,000 words. But I will break this question into each each question mark. Do you think India is doing enough to maximize its relationship with the U.S.? The answer would be a diplomatic no, but definitely an emphatic yes, the way it is moving now. I'll put it that way. Uh, it, they are trying to maximize the relationship. One thing has been clear that whatever our differences on Russia, we must expand our scope of relationship, which is what is happening now. Economically, militarily, and diplomatically, should India attend upcoming G7 BRICS summit? Listen, uh, my pet theme in these matters is engage yourself. Be present where your enemies are talking about you, even otherwise. If you are not there, then you do not know. So if you want to win something, you've got to be playing the game. So my thought process is differences apart. G7, I don't think we are members at yet. 
BRIC summit and all, India has chosen to be out of it, but sort out the matter, remain engaged in the process. Even if you are dis, dis, unhappy with uh, something that has gone on, fix it or assert yourself, but don't disengage 100%. How should India, India maximize its national power by using these platforms? We have to become an economic giant in our own right. Listen, everybody will listen to you if you have the strength, the economic strength, which gives us the military and political strength. It is all interconnected. If we are proper, nobody will listen to you. Think about it. Okay. Next. Uh, next question. Deepak Ranjan, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oriental arms. But now uh, he asked this question. And after that, after he had asked this question, I read out that uh, Jay Shankar yeah, reply. Article. Yes. Jay Shankar reply. And so, in the last part, he has retracted his question. He says that, okay, I, I, I withdraw. Now that I know that Jay Shankar has said this, I stand corrected, he said. Jai when Jai alarms, you really react fast. India needs to react <laughs> as quickly as you do. Well done, boss. <laughs> okay, next. Alak Patel, namaste, sir. The U.S. Democratic Party was historically pro-law enforcement, while Republicans used to be pro-military when it came to funding. But Democrats have been anti-law enforcement. What caused the change? The politics of appeasement, politics of pandering, that's what caused the change. They created the vote bank. The Democrats are very, very smart about one thing. They know how to divide. Look at this current crisis of social crisis in America is about transgender. They have completely bypassed the women's sporting events and transgenders are participating in women athletics. They are not giving a damn about how the women athletics will shape up. Women's sports will shape up totally against women's uh, women sports and women participation. But they are now dividing the society on a transgender basis. They like to destroy things and then they put a bandaid and say, see, we fix it. That's the Democratic Party style. They never solve a problem. They love to perpetuate the problem. You can find similarities within our own country back home in India too. Oh, yes. Hamara. Tapu. <laughs> Next. Swanoj Chinde, Sanjay sir, kya hum phir se Sri Lanka aur Nepal, Hindustan mein milane ka wakt aa gaya hai? Bhai, wo keh rahe hai kya? Zabar dasti to nahi karenge. Next. Uh, भारत के प्रकाश क्या अमेरिका के हिंदू नए जर्मनी के यहूदी हैं यू नो वी एज अ फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन ऑलवेज सेज दैट वी आर विक्टिम्स ऑफ आवर ओन सक्सेस सो वी हैव क्रिएटेड जेलसी फैक्टर एंड यू नो यू नो लाइक एवरीथिंग हैज अ गुड एंड नेगेटिव पार्ट ऑफ इट सो एंटायर यू नो द द सक्सेस ऑफ इंडियंस हैज अर्कड पीपल एंड एंड दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू बेयर इन माइंड यू गॉट टू डील विद दैट so whether it's a, you know they are bringing about fake stories like there is a very interesting organization called indian american muslim council do you know what they do they say indian americans oppose prime minister modi but it's by indian american muslim council but they term it as indian american think about it there is a definite wave of people who are creating an anti india narrative calling themselves indian american but they hide the muslim council behind it so you know if i if i say something about it then i'll be blamed as uh, islamophobic if you say something you know we have to expose these narratives very smartly uh, in yeah. any case they're not going to vote for you so you can not going to vote you. for me anyway so. So, so 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 be more assertive chandra has do you think the new woke ruled us can double cross us and even pump china to wage a war on us they're eagerly waiting to send us medicines and humanitarian aid as we did in Ukraine. I, I don't think U.S. will double cross or pump China to wage a war with India because both the country, I think China and India are smart enough to know that a full-fledged war is neither country's, is in neither country's interest. And both know that they are economic giants of the future. They control the biggest market in the world. The, the issue, the Onus is more on China, from my point of view, to mend its ways with India. 
as simple as that. Uh, but US and European manipulation will not succeed in this. It is up to India and China and they have to man up and face up to the brutal reality that any fight that happens between India and China, we ruin ourselves. That's it. Right. Next one. Sachin Garg, Secretary Blinken looked pretty apologetic, talked about not being able in the past to able and willing now lagta hai jay shankar ji ne band kaksh mein bahut satai kari hai ab to khule mein kar di next please ab to khule mein kar di sudeep we see us bending backwards for indian support why is this the case why are they so concerned about indian safety it's you know it is sometimes it it it, it happens that you recognize that you can't ignore somebody beyond a point. And I'm very proud to hear your question because many times I have said this in the past that India, you, India cannot be ignored in this 21st century, both for its content and both. And another fact of the leadership part has played a big role. Whether you like Mr. Modi or you do not like Mr. Modi, whether you agree with him or you do not agree with him is, not, is no longer important. He has definitely upped the ante in terms of the international relationship, image building, and the sense of pride, which is very key for all of us. I mean, I'm living abroad. I can tell you that till he came to power, we used to carry the ugly badge of corrupt Indian. Today, each one Indian is proud that I can proudly say that my leader is not a corrupt. That's it. Next. When you buy something, you buy it. Ati Sundar Taiji. Well, I haven't understood. I haven't figured out what he's trying to say. So, but thank you for your contribution, that. Robert Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, you will be more clear. Mini Razdan, thank you, Mini Razdan Ji. Thank, thank you, you for very much. the support. Thank you, thank you thank very you much. So much. Next, Abhijit Sudhakar, Vibhuti Jha for president. Oh, thank you. But I will not, I'm not born in America. So that question is gone. Who knows the future? <laughs> okay. Thank so you. you have to be born in America, is it? Yes, yes, yes. That's the clause um, which Sharad Pawar used against Sonia Gandhi. <laughs> Sonia Gandhi. <laughs> For which she's never been forgiven. <laughs> okay. Oriental arms again. Vibhuti ji, while interacting with several companies in the US who are very reluctant to transfer technology to India, it's almost a vehement no-no in case of defense companies, both small and large. What would be your suggestion to break this on pass? It is very simple. Uh, because of the historical relationship with India has had with Russia, Americans have always been concerned about the technology part because, the, you know, the inventions, re research that goes into the innovation of machinery, weaponry, there was always a trust deficit. The other part is also very important. 90% of the US industries are in private sector, even their ultra secret defense industries in the private sector. So they trust people. They trust you and I as a citizens of the country. But in India, the rule was socialist system. Sarkar will do everything. Public sector was the thing. The ability to negotiate a deal became tougher because of the trust factor and the socialist regime factor. So things were moving very slowly. Now we know that private sector has begun to play a role in it. And I think it will, it will become easier to the extent that the transferable technologies can be transferred. The ultra secret one, like Coca-Cola formula, need not be done. But how the color, I think that is going to happen. I think India has achieved that breakthrough and it will happen more and more. All right. Next one. Uh, so both left-wing Democrats and right-wing Republicans criticize India and sermonize us. Who is better for India? You're talking Look, to a Republican. I... So what do you expect? <laughs> no, I'm good for I Listen, I'll put it this way to you. I have repeatedly asked Ro Khanna, Pramila Jaipal, and uh, Raja Krishnamurti and others, why do you keep quiet when India is attacked? Whether there is any issue whatever it is, when the shrill hate for India emerges from various quarters, and most of them are Democratic Party people, I say, why don't you talk to them? Why don't you invite us to talk? But Republican Party is now 
leaning towards India. Believe it or not, they are leaning towards India and us because they recognize that amongst the minorities, against the other part, we are very good people. We are not a law and order problem. We are generally good. So Republicans are willing to listen because of the value part. Both Indians and Republicans align better than Democrats. That's an issue that we will talk about more later. Uh, okay, the last question from Abhijit Sudhakar. Are conservatives like uh, Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, etc., pro-India? Your opinion on them? Majority of the people do not know us. That's let's let's bear that in fact. They go they get carried away by the narrative dissed out to them and provided to them. So it is for us. It's like I learned in American Express in India that if I don't talk about what I'm doing, why will the boss care to know about me? He has so many more people to worry about. So if it's not about blowing your trumpet, it's not about beating your drum, but whatever you are, whoever you are, if you do not tell them, how will they know? Remember, crying baby always gets more milk. So the point of the matter is you don't have to cry, but you, that's why Vivekananda's four, three A's are so important for us. Arise, awaken, and assert, and to which I have added my fourth A act, because you let them know that you are good enough to be, if I'm good, if the hundreds of Indians are good enough to be the CEOs of big companies here, how can they be bad? You know, that's the point which I'm trying to say. You need to, we need to carry our story to them. Why would they read? Just as the book is written, Sanjayji wrote the book. If he had not told anybody about it, who would read that book? But we advertised, we talked, we told what is there in the book. We explained the content and what it tells. You bought it. You read it. Follow that example. Okay. Chetanji, thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, we come to the end of the session. Thank you very much, viewers. And thank you very much, uh, Vibhuti ji. Wonderful having you. Thank you. On this Wednesday session once again. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram. And we close in one hour sharp. <laughs> exactly. Thank you.